talk to Fox News. I said, that's the kind of guy I want to be a reporter. And here you are doing a great job now. People love what you're doing. And it's all about people that don't think of themselves as journalists or as info warriors doing it because you don't have a choice. And it's going to be the rank and file people like you and others getting involved, engaging, that will bring down the New World Order. So thank you so much, Joe. We'll go talk to Leanne McAdoo here in just a moment. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. So excited to be working with Joe Biggs. And again, we're here in the new studio working out the bugs. Haven't seen hardly any bugs today. I was expecting a whole bunch of train wreck stuff. In fact, it have been, been better for ratings. We'd have a light fall on my head or something like Hillary Clinton on 60 Minutes. Though there was an extra light panel on, which was even cooler. Made me look like one of those giant Martian eggheads. Because I already kind of look like that. If people didn't realize, my dad's a dentist and he thinks it's interesting. I talked to an oral surgeon once it's true. I have an incredibly wide jaw like a pit bull. So it's not that I even have a weak chin. It's that this part of the cranium is very big and this is wide as well. So I'm kind of a freak, folks. Maybe I'm a genetic mutation, huh? I mean, I mean, look at that. I mean, look at the size of that head on those shoulders. Look at the size of that head. It has its own weather systems. Who's the guy that, uh, all right, that's enough. That's enough, guys. It's even blurred. I need to quit screwing around here. Sorry. Like, I start screwing around, and then I tell them to stop screwing around. Who's the guy that uh, does the uh, secret agent comedy movies, and then he's fat bastard on it as well? He plays himself. Austin Powers, but what's the name of the actor? Mike Myers. Yeah, he did some funnier movies uh, where he's sitting there talking about his kid's head. And I was like, look at the size of that head. has its own weather systems. So that's all part of our Scottish, Scottish independence this week. We have Scottish John who's been out picketing and promoting the Second Amendment for 10 years that I've known him here in Austin. And he's a Scot, got the thick Scot accent. He's going to be in studio with us tomorrow to talk about uh, the... Scottish independence vote that is coming up and more teleprompter free radio and television right now. Let's take you live to Clandathu where our forces have just engaged the main bug fleet on their home world. Uh, excuse me, that's Starship Troopers. Uh, I take you now live to New York City on the edge of the barricades to keep the slaves away. Uh, hence, any of our ideas get out. I think I see a tyranny response team shirt over there. That guy might be a listener. Leanne McAdoo, what is your take? Uh, 13 years later there at Ground Zero. Hi, Alex. Liam McAdoo. I am very happy to be here, and I am standing outside one of what I think is one of the smoking guns of 9-11, the brand new and improved World Trade Center building number seven. It's right behind us, and I think there's a consensus around here that anyone, just look at the physics, just look at the physics. They keep saying two planes, three buildings, do the math. That's a huge smoking gun. Um, Larry Silverstein profited. He got more than double what the what he owed on the building back in, in blood money and insurance money. So quite the payout there. Um, but if I had to say another smoking gun, I'm sorry, but it's the, the invisible plane that hit the Pentagon. I mean, I've looked at the pictures. Why are you I, being I racist? Yeah, you know, I like to uh, educate myself. I know a lot of people would prefer to just, you know, watch the game. And that was something we noticed. We were talking about that last night at dinner before the president came on to speak, just how much patriotism has been lost in this country. There was a time when people, even if they were at a bar, out to dinner, or hanging out, if they knew the president was coming on to speak about something like what he was talking about last night, basically bringing us into a new war with Syria that's going to extend beyond his presidency, people would have stopped to pay attention. But nobody even cared, and in fact, they were pretty upset that we asked them to change the channel so that we could listen to what the president had to say. We become a total joke. Our country has become a joke. The presidency has become a joke. And we're not bashing, because I know you, you know, personally, your view on this, I'm not putting words in your mouth, correct me if I'm wrong. It's not that we like bashing America. There's still a lot of great people here. It's that you've just got so many entitled. Here's an example. I went to a local community pool with my children yesterday, and there were some yuppies in the shallow end, two lovebirds kissing. Look, they were both about 25 college students. And my daughters were splashing and racing and a little bit of water, a little bit, because I happened to be watching them. I was sitting down on the side, drying off, happened to hit the lady in the face. And she was like, oh, oh what are you, oh, is this, I mean, what? And, and the guy, and, and all these so-called yuppies get so mad by families with kids, like they're re revolted by it or something. 
And it's this entitlement. It's this decadence. It's this, I don't want to know. I want to play fantasy football that the system is banking on. It's scary. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. Well, and that's how they know it's going to be so easy to control this narrative. And, and the kids that are, you know, just tomorrow, they're going to be teenagers for the first time, first time teenagers that uh, didn't actually experience 9-11. They weren't alive. And so they're counting on to just continue regurgitating this, their narrative of how things happened and hoping that the rest of the people who were there, who could see with their own eyes, will just buy their story. They're just hoping. But that, that's the problem is that a lot of those kids are, you know, they're the Internet generation. So they're I agree going with you. these pictures. Hold on, we're going gonna, gonna to skip this network break so we can have time to get into some of the smoking guns. But, Leanne, I'm going to come back to you in a moment. Let's cut to the studio shot right now of Nico and Buckley. <laughs> like, Buckley looks like a Russian gangster sitting there. And so people are always trying to claim that we work for Putin, the Vatican, Israel, or something. I want to say it's all true, folks. There is Buckley. His real name is Vladimir Bugolnumskragasmobrad. And they also called name the wolf. Look at him. Ah, ah, and his top henchman beside him, Nico, and deal with you, jujitsu master. Ah. Yeah, he grew up Eastern Russia. Ah. Look at this new. I shouldn't even joke around. It'll be a whole new conspiracy theory. Actually, folks, Nico is Bill Hicks. It's true. <laughs> Oh, and I'm sorry. This is supposed to be a serious fourth hour. Everybody knows that uh, that's probably not a good idea. That's why I quit doing the fourth hour. Because I'm just, after three hours being so serious, I can't handle it anymore. Uh, it, it is incredibly serious. Leanne, they could stage a new 9-11 and blame it on ISIS or let ISIS in to do it. And they're so arrogant, and, and the TV heads don't seem to care, and we see all the preparations for it. I see them getting ready for a nuclear 9-11, and Obama says the number one threat he sees is a, is a mushroom cloud in New York. So that's what my gut tells me is something really huge is on the horizon. And that we're seen as such chumps by the globalists that they're going to pull something big. What do you think? Well, and that's, that's exactly right. He says that's his biggest fear. And then they go around poking the nuclear bear, trying to provoke Putin and one of the only countries that that is basically saying, yay, we've got nukes and we're going to use them if you make us. So, But, I mean, why be closed-minded? I mean, they're trying to promote, you know, all sorts of stuff now. So what's wrong with poking the bear? Hey, apparently, as long as he's got nukes, that's that's what the kids want to do these days. So, <sighs> I don't want to give them any ideas now. That'll be a whole <laughs> new term out there. I, I guess nuclear war will be like a new fetish, you know, where you uh, destroy. I, I guess nihilists are kind of into that. What do you think, Leanne? Well, I mean, they clearly bathe in the blood of all these deaths that they've they've committed. They revel in it. They celebrate it. So why not just just see? Why are you just being close-minded? Well, I mean, plan. you haven't tried bathing in blood. You're right. You know, maybe it's magnificent. Who knows? There's actually a fountain over here with a big, looks like kind of blood platelets here in Larry Silverstein's fountain to commemorate those who survived. He probably comes out at midnight like Nosferatu. And actually, we pull up Nosferatu. Because Larry Silverstein <laughs> starred in the 1927 original Nosferatu. We've actually got a shot of him right after he filed the insurance policy uh, on 9-11 uh, a few months before. He went out and had a celebratory snack. Let's see if we can put Nosferatu behind me. There you go. We can actually get a video clip of Larry Silverstein. <laughs> Pardon me. Had some... Uh... So what I'm curious, too, is like you see the, the, the people um, celebrating when they actually see all the rioting and things going on in Ferguson. You saw how that affected people around the world. People were saying, yay, the Americans are finally waking up. They're finally fighting back. They finally realize that they're living in a police state. And they're rooting for us. They're rooting for the American people to wake up and to realize that we are, our government is occupied. Exactly. But uh, again... It's fine to start with going out and demonstrating for the First Amendment. But we need to go out and talk to the cops when they're not in riot gear to wake them up to what's happening. Just like that police officer came over to uh, Biggs earlier and said he's awake. Only reason I'm saying let's make friends with the police is because compared to the general public, I'm actually able to wake police up or they're already awake. Because they're in the system. They know something's wrong, most of them. Most of them aren't just bullies for no reason. They're all under peer pressure and compartmentalized. From doing this 20 years, 
I have just have discovered the military is just so awake. And then the police are the second best group. In my experience, that's why they want us fighting with them, because the system absolutely hates them. That's why they demonize the veterans and things, is because they're worried about anybody that could stop the takeover when it becomes incredibly obvious. Who went after Hitler? His own military. Who went after Stalin and probably killed him? His own military. Who ends up going after the really bad guys? It's usually the military or the police. That's why the system keeps them on such a short leash and right close to them. And then Homeland Security gives them all this federal training, sends them out to do this, and gives them all the equipment, and then comes in, oh, it's terrible what you did, even though they set them up for it. Very sophisticated manipulation. So just like we're played off against the Muslims, we need to be more sophisticated and realize the larger plan. Don't, don't you agree, Leanne? Absolutely. And you can see that separation here evident just today in the fact that we had the first responders once again weren't allowed to join in the ceremony because they know, first of all, of course, the families are going to want to hug these people that risked their lives to save their family, saved a whole lot of more lives that day than what was lost. But maybe they have some questions for the first responders. But see how reality's flipped? We're arming Al Qaeda publicly. And then meanwhile, the first responders can't get medical care. Leanne McAdoo, okay, you have more reports coming up for the Nightly News. Great job, you and Joe. Take a break, get something to eat, kick your feet back for a while, and uh, then go out and get some more great reports, and then it's, then it's Miller time. <laughs> My favorite time, the magic hour. We'll be out at Times Square reporting, bringing you the info. Hey, I just had an idea. How about we get a <laughs> bunch of info warriors to go to Times Square, say, at 7 o'clock tonight uh, in front of some landmark, uh, just and, and we'll put a tweet out and a Facebook out. There's hardly any promotion, but I bet 100 people show up. You want to call for a Liberty Mob to show up in Times Square, Leanne? Where do you want Absolutely. them to meet you? Liberty Mob in Times Square. What we're hearing is that uh, the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth have paid to get a um, one of the billboards there to have a revolving loop of World Trade Center 7 going down. Yeah, they've so done that hoping, before, but but where do you want people to at, meet you? That's at 42nd and, and 6th Street. We'll be there. It's, I think that it's like the magic steps or something, the steps to infinity, right in the center, right in the heart of everything. We will be there. 47th and 6th Street. We just had that 42nd, idea. 42nd, 42nd. 42nd and 6th. 42nd and 6th. And and we'll tweet that out at the magic steps. Everybody will see Leanne and Joe Biggs out there. Great job, Leanne. Thank you, Alex. All right, folks, we're out of time. I didn't get to most of the smoking guns. Uh, there's hundreds of them, but we have 10 on Infowars.com, the top 10. Cheney recalls uh, taking charge from Bunker, the stand down. 15 of the 19 hijackers led into the country. Hijackers trained in the U.S. Obama, uh, Obama, it says Obama. Uh, Osama, not wanted by FBI for 9-11. Prior warnings, Willie Brown warned not to fly. Lisa Rice, uh, it just goes on and on. The 28 pages, people that have seen them, says that there was basically a stand-down ordered when Saudi Arabia involved. That's just some of the major issues. Uh, the cell phones working from impossible heights. The FBI admitting it was fake. Let's thank God there wasn't a terror attack yet today. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it was just Homeland Security fear-mongering. Thank you to all the InfoWars out there making this possible. And great job with the crew. Until 7 o'clock tonight with InfoWars Nightly News, you are the resistance. for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose for a limited time.
We are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com.